These five, their aim is to get from island across the sea into the other island, okay? So for example, if they get all the way across, they score themselves one point. Now, if the guard manages to take their bib, they then swap over. Hi, I'm Stacey Miles. I'm a coach development officer for the Football Association. Today we're going to be doing a session on moving with the ball. The idea being we would like the players to be creative, we would like them to excite with the ball. This uh, practice in particular would be suited for 5 to 11, so foundation phase, however, could be adapted for the youth development phase 12 to 16 as well. So we're going to work on the centre part of the practice here in terms of the pitch. We've got a layout, um, as you can see per the diagram, we've got two end zones, which are islands. And then we've also got the magical sea in between. As you can see, there's a halfway line, um, which we've used some flat spot markers across the middle there. We've got five players that will have a bib. The choice that those players get is whether they want to have the bib tucked in at the front, the side, or behind, so like a tail, it's so completely their choice. The others are our guards. Now these are the sea guards. They are locked in to start in these zones, okay? Now the idea, these five, their aim is to get from island across the sea into the other island, okay? So for example, if they get all the way across, they score themselves one point. Now, if the guard manages to take their bib, they then swap over, so the bib now goes to the other player who then comes into here, and there we would have, obviously, the bib would be with this player, and then they've swapped roles. So as they get across to the other side, if they do that, they get one point. What do they do next? That's what the players are going to ask. They've then got the challenge of trying to get back across the other way for more points. We can work this on a time constraint, so you might go, right, we're going to play for two minutes, see how many times you can try and get across, try and get past the sea guards that are in the middle here. You might call them um, sharks, it might be fishes, you might tailor it to the group that you've got. As soon as they get across, obviously they get a point and then they've got to try and get back. I would swap the players around, definitely, even though the, the, the game in particular links and they will get chances to become attackers and defenders based around the principles of the game. However, within this practice, I'd look to develop it. So in terms of thinking about youth players around their fundamental movement skills, rather than just running straight across for one point, which they can still get, I'd like to challenge them to try and hop across on one leg for 10 points. So you might ask them how many points. Why? Because it's worth a challenge, um, worth an extra points, helps them develop those fundamental movement skills. Okay. Other ways in which you might progress and challenge in, in terms of the step principle, you might reduce and get rid of this middle line so actually these players are not restricted and as you can see there, they're free flowing their decision. They might choose to have two or one. You might also swap one of these players in particular, for example, so you might have more blues than yellows in the middle there. So you might have more guards, sea guards rather than those in yellow. So it's a directional practice with some, um, in terms of interference in between, the idea being try to get past the guards in the middle. Okay, then a further progression, of course, you can add the ball. Choice, the players can choose to have the ball in hands or on the floor. This supports them with their motivations, but then also gives them that ownership of what they'd like to have a go within the practice. So, if they're holding on to the ball and they get all the way through without getting their ball tagged, they then get a point. However, if they choose to dribble with it on the floor and they dribble across like that, marvellously, that's worth 10 points. The reason being, obviously, ball on the floor is a little bit more challenging. So now they've all individually got a ball each, as you can see. Their choice is ball in hands. OK, so the bibs they've now put away, they've now got the ball in hands. They've got to run across for one point. If the guard tags the ball safely, and I reiterate safely, because um, we want to help uh, young players with uh, their social skills, then they swap over. Simple as that. They become the guard, same as the practice before. But also on this one, if they choose to dribble across, it's worth 10 points. Once they get across, exactly the same process as the game before, where then they're looking to get back across to this side. Further progressions, you might add more guards, the same as before. You might then choose to ask them to try and do a skill as they get across, see how close they can get to the defenders without losing their ball. You might have, um, for example, if the defender wins the ball they might have to get it to the middle line before they can score etc so uh, complete variations and that's the first part of the practice 
Now for part two of the practice, linking to moving with the ball, the aim of trying to get past defenders. So all we're going to do is on the end zone where the islands were, we're just going to add some small goals. If you don't have goals, you can use end zones, you might use target players, but in this case, we're going to use some goals. As you can see, we've still got our halfway line from flat spots and we have our two end zones. Within this, we are also now going to have a goalkeeper on each side. Now, the goalkeepers are not restricted to those specific areas. We would like, as, a, as an outfield player as well, to encourage them to come out and use their feet also. We would also encourage, within the 5 to 11 age group, for you to rotate players so they get a, a good experience of uh, playing all variety of roles as well. So, just to show you this practice, it's very simple linking to movement with the ball. So, the idea being the yellows are trying to score this way, and the blues are trying to score that way, so a directional practice. Now, to score a goal, the only restriction I'm going to put on is that the team, for example, so the yellows are going this way, the yellows, you have to be in this end zone before you can score. Okay, now, the halfway line here is really important. So, if you have two yellows in their half when you score, it's worth two goals. Okay, now I want you to think about the reasoning for this might be you're thinking why. Well, I'd encourage my players, if the ball's up there, can we push up and support the attack? Exactly the same for the goalkeeper, relating to where the back line might be pushing them up the pitch. So, if now they have three in that end zone when they score, it's worth three goals. This is also because we see lots of goals in football scored within this area nice little one two type finishes that they can link up and play together no players are restricted anywhere within this practice so it's a small sided game but the restriction is to start and i emphasize to start that they have to be in the end zone to score why because the practice is around moving with the ball and we want our players to be exciting we want our players to be brave and we want them to excite and get past and try and take players on whilst maintaining possession of the ball. So that is our second part of the practice. Now, I know what you're thinking, how might you change this? You can, um, obviously, you might emphasise the end zones are worth more. So say the yellow score from here, that's worth, oh, the keeper saved that one, we better be careful there. If, if the, they score from one there, it's worth one, and the end zone might be score, uh, worth more points, for example. Really important foundation phase to consider. Opportunities where little half-time team talks, where they can get in and have those conversations about how the game's going, and as a team, what they can improve on together.